All right, welcome back, everybody. It's time for our fourth matchup here on the A stream. Wolves, a hot off of an 8 7 victory over Gaming Gladiators, will take on OXG, the uh, fourth place team <laughs> at the Charlotte Major. Top that, four place team. That's what they are. They're the fourth place team. Well, third, fourth. Okay. Right? They also haven't played yet. So there's that. At the Charlotte Major. Oh, I thought... At the Charlotte Major. Oh, I thought at the last Major. I, I am not prognosticating. Oh, I thought you were slandering them already. I was like, God damn. No, I'm oh. talking specifically about how they did in you know, Charlotte, that, that's Nick. That's my bad. Yes, it that's is. My that's my Okay. The rosters between these two teams are quite legendary in their respective regions. For OXG, you know them. Fox A, Laxing, Newers, Vertical, and Dream. For the Wolves, you just saw them in action. P4, Shinka, Mowgli, Rise, and Bibu. And the one thing that both of these teams do have in common, Nick, is they have some serious veterans of the scene on their rosters. Bibu's been around since basically the beginning. Rise very close to Fox A and Laxing have been around from the beginning as well. Yes. In fact, Laxing is actually a world champion, having won the very first Six Invitational on Xbox. Yep. So they've been around the block an awful have. lot. An awful lot. And that experience kind of shows their gameplay, right? And mm. they're also enabled to pick up new gunners. Yes. Newers, most notably, is a very young gunner who's very good at shooting heads <laughs> and making tweets. I had to say that, sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> The and man, the man is the man's bad. He's bad. Like, and I mean, like, good bad. But his tweets are like bad, like bad, bad. <laughs> you know. So either way, whether you want to focus on social media or not, Norris has been one of the top performers since he made his debut in the North American League, and he's going to need a strong performance here in a pressure cooker that is a major. Now, just over here, let me just let me just let me, let me just. Oh, 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 oh okay. it moved. All oh. right. We're going to Clubhouse, by the way. As you can see, all of these maps that are banned out. Let me, it's like mirrored. Look at that. All yeah. of them gone, and whoop, we're going to Clubhouse. I like that. Clubhouse, Dub House. We saw Oregon, you and I did earlier on. Oregon's been played a couple times on the streams today, on both A stream and B stream. And yes, not that we want to drive you off of this stream, but of course there is a B stream that is happening. Ace and Dez are going through the motions right now. Is that the G2 Sonics game that's going on believe, right now? I believe it would be, yeah. Okay, there you go. So you can go over there. You can check it out. If you're on any device that can run multiple windows, then you can watch both the games simultaneously. If you're on a mobile device, just buy a second phone. Uh, it's that simple, right? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> it's so Don't easy. Don't have a house. Buy another house, dude. Come on. Oh, you can't afford what do you can't afford a house just work harder right <laughs> it's, it's super easy we have the teams ready though by the way we're trying to make up for some lost time here so let's get into the match let's see a map that is actually set in the country in which we are in it's what's in hamburg right i, I believe, believe, it's, I believe, it's, I believe it's in hamburg not quite the same location we're in berlin we're gonna go clubhouse OXG versus wolves wolves picked up two points not all three in their earlier matchup why because they lost, or they, they made it to overtime, which means they lose a point. That point goes to Gaming Gladiators. True. So Gaming Gladiators still pick up a single point for their efforts. OXG starting on defense first. That means they are going to ban. Historically, Clubhouse has been a very friendly map for the defenders. Will that hold Ooh. true? All right, so starting off with that Ibana ban, that's going to mean that the basement bombs at now is a lot more impactful, easier to play, because Ibana is such a troublesome operator because she can open up all those hedges with ease. And actually, Wolves matching a harbor but on Maverick as well, that's going to make defending CCTV and Jim a lot easier. So we might actually see a defender-sided clubhouse of all things. Wolves bans out the mirror, that's pretty stable, happens all the time. Some teams play it, some teams do not. That leaves a final defending ban, probably going to be the Isami, Wamai, or the Valkyrie. I can see a Kaid ban too, but no, it's going to be Valkyrie here. That means that for Hard Breach, unless you bring the secondary Hard Breach gadget, which is entirely possible, if teams want to run a Buck or a Fuse, for example, yes. maybe even a Ying, you're going to see Ace and Thermite quite regularly. And while the attackers can repick their full lineup for the prep phase, it's an Ace and Thermite being locked in right off the rip. Right off the rip, indeed. And into the game we go. It's going to put us in the basement first, which, again, not a huge surprise given the Hibana band being on the table. It really opens up the capability of this bomb side. One thing I want to note right now is that Laxing is running the Kaid on the board, which is atypical because Thatcher is open. 
However, one thing to note here, by bringing out the Kaid, you're basically forcing Wolves to pick up the Thatcher, or to make their lives a little easier, you're gonna choose to pick up the Thatcher, and that's gonna limit how aggressive their attack and armor can be, and now if you look at it, Ace is important, Fermat's important, Thatcher's important, and if you kill Ryze on the Sledge, that's your only vertical player, if you kill Mowgli, that's half your grenade and utility and explosive economy, every single member of Wolves in the attack and lineup is required for every single part of the round. That means that if OXG gets a spawn, peak on aggressive pick, high, high value across the board. And if you know XD, if you know newers, they're gonna look for those picks as the spawn peak is happening, but nobody will get picked off guard because Wolves are playing it safe, they're piling up with safety, and they'll just open up the CC wall as they're gonna take out the roamers from XD. Very quick action as there's the Kaid. Laxing has the Electric Claw in his hand. We've come up with different terms for things like bandit tricking, impact tricking, etc. But I always liked calling it the Electro Shuffle. And I don't <laughs> it it never it. caught on. You oh know, I gotta God. say, I might be alone in this one, but I always liked calling it the Electro Shuffle. I like that. I we should they make never, that they thing, never actually. It never stuck, right? They're just like, oh, they're they're Kaid tricking. And it's like, look, you can't just call everything tricking. It doesn't really work that way. You have to change it up from time to time. Repetition. Is oh, the enemy yeah. laxing guns down? Rise, very first kill of this map goes in favor of the North Americans. And already there, sledge off the board, run to basement because why? Kitchen floor now is not really gonna get opened up because Shinga's running Claymore, P4 is running Claymore. We have four Claymores in a basement attack. We don't need that. We need soft breaching charges in case Rise dies in the sledge that I spoke about earlier. Because now, no verticality, half your nades are gone. Rise was zero and four on the entry against Gaming Gladiators. He is currently. 0 and 1 on entry in the very first round against OXG. And to add insult to injury, we got four claymores. I gotta say it one more time. There it is. This means OXG can bunker up in the bomb site. With only one grenade left in the pocket of Mowgli, they cannot clear out both kind calls. They will have to use their EMPs. Instead, Moto Hatch gets opened up. That's gonna be Vivo's second exothermic charge he used one earlier for the CC Rome. That leaves just the two Selna charges in P4's pocket. Wolves are very limited in what they can open and what angles they'll have at their disposal. Again, OXG in a good position in the driver's seat. Mowgli will likely stay on this Finca for the entirety of it. That's not Mowgli down in the camera, that's Dream. So, I mean, maybe they're just shapeshifting. <gasps> Could he be a traitor? An Betraying his own team? I believe there is an imposter among us. That looked like it might have been Shinka getting the kill, but no, it was Mowgli to go down to vertical. OXG continues to add to their numbers now. And Final kill, or first kill rather, for Wolves. Finally, they're able to get one vertical, no more. Azami at this point with 30 seconds left should have gotten most of those Kiba barriers out. And now it's all up to the two remaining members of Wolves as P4 is off of the board. Laxing's second kill with just 30 seconds remain means that both Bibu and Shinka have an awful lot of work to be done, and they are miles apart. Bibu over towards blue, Shinka over towards the church side, and it's Shinka first to be found. Bibu, an easy kill onto Dream, but answered back by Newers. Ooh. That's Newers posted up inside a church. Is he a man of faith? Is he a man of prayer? Who knows? Yeah. But either way, miracles do happen. And Newers, the beneficiary of one with his two kills. I will say, actually, as a non-mechanical player myself, I do really enjoy watching players like Bolo, like Newers, who are very mechanically gifted. It seems so easy for them to hit the headshots, whereas if I was in Newers' shoes, I probably would have gotten the kills as well, sure, but it wouldn't have been as clean, I would have spent way more bullets, and my movement as well wouldn't have been near as flawless. So I just want to do some praise in there. It's really fun to watch mechanical players, because we ain't all that kind of player. But we can all use our drones, get call outs, make other teammates stronger by support them, etc. And you know what? That makes me an even better teammate than just playing for yourself. So I think the real winners are support players. Definitely. You can say not all of us can be like that. Most of the people watching this are not going to be anywhere near as mechanically gifted as most of these players that are in this match, Nick. But I do appreciate the fact that you're willing to pump their tires. You know, unironically, I, as a former pro, I'm not that further ahead mechanically than like you are the average player. Like, I specifically am not. Have you seen me play? I have trackpad. We spoke about it earlier. Yeah. It's not well, pretty. Yeah. yeah. But like, we're actually not that far apart. If you look at like me exactly. and viewers and me and Bolo, it's like there's like miles apart. I'm just telling you, you and I are not so different, partner. <laughs> I believe that. You might. No, oh, I don't believe it at all. <laughs> That's fair. But 
Well, you know what? Obviously, he believes in CCTV's secondary rotation. It's not going to be Jim. That's a big debate that pro players have right now, where which one do you prefer the most? With Maverick being banned, I actually do think that CC second is a really good choice. But if Maverick is open, I personally sway Jim to be more favored because the Maverick breach doesn't get as much value as the, you know, Jacuzzi walls don't give you direct sight uh, access, or the CC wall, it indeed does. Wolves, they're going to go for a bit of a wrong clear once again. Ryan's working at Jacuzzi wall. Sees it, fake throws in a wall bank, steers it out the yellow ping even beautiful play from rise big brain old boomer man captain of the team gets the opening verticals next as they're just waltzing on into these off-site areas Mowgli picks up Wolf's second kill one minute off of the board and two players from OXG off of the board Azami and Malusi again going back to these operators that they get so much more value the longer that they stay around well Maya is one of them Smoke is another Echo, Maestro, and a zombie. Lesion also yeah. in that mix too, though we don't see an awful lot of Lesion at Pro Play anymore. But a zombie keeps generating those Kiba barriers as she stays alive. Once you hit the one minute 30 mark or so, I think you've got all of them at that point. 145. 145 to be very specific. I was just ballparking it. That is. Okay, thank you very much. The Electro Shuffle goes off on is. the wall. and Another clot juggled out from Laxing. It's dream to sit on top of it. That means the Selma charges from Ace thrown over from construction. Nowhere near successful. There's also a mute jammer for added measure. Dream missing an opportunity. Will oh. the Nitro Cell do it? No, a grenade gets tossed in in its stead, and gunfire will be exchanged from both of these players. Mowgli with the S or the LMG versus Dream with the SMG. That is an unfair fight just based on munition, but he doesn't need a gun to do it. Nicely shot from Foxy as he patrols over towards the breach now after taking Mowgli down. Sees one on a wire, but can't capitalize. Laxing waits, but Bibu reads him like a book. And it leaves Fox A, that team captain, in a 1v4. The sledge encroaching on his turf. Fox A heads for the safety of the stairs, but can't get it done as P4 is there before he gets to it. Wolves answer back, and they're tied one apiece. Completely different round from the first one on basement. Completely swayed in favor of Wolves there. And all of a sudden, Ryan's getting that wall bank kill onto Neuris. And I just want to once again say how well Ryan's put the scenario. He basically droned out Neuris in the corner, flicked his drone away from Neuris, basically pretending he didn't see him. Then he drove further for about five or like about three seconds further, basically once again giving Neuris the illusion that he had no idea he was there, but Ryan's played it smart. He faked it all out, got a free wall bank, didn't even need that yellow ping, and that opened up the round. Mowgli jumped in construction window, took out the second member inside a master bedroom, and then right there, we're playing five versus three into a four versus three in massive favor of Wolves. And we're now gonna swap the bomb side to the third option on the table, which is the gym bomb side. And this is basically a similar position where you extend across the map, like CCTV, which was previously, but then you hold gym as well. And this basically means that you have a strong position because it's easier to hold CCTV re with reinforcements than holding master bedroom bathroom like you saw Neuros try with soft walls. So arguably, a very similar situation, but stronger on both ends of the vendors. Attacker's objective is to locate a bomb and As we saw in the matchup that we just casted, Nick, the team will not go back to the same bomb site that they lost, even if it does tend to be quite strong in this case. We're gonna go over to gym and bedroom as was discussed, that tertiary bomb site. It's not uncommon now to see all four sites be played mm. on Clubhouse, but bar and stock, or bar and stage as it's actually referred to now, yes. it's hard getting used to the new terms. Especially when all the world's a stage. <laughs> Doesn't pop up all that often. It might be a pocket strat for certain teams. I don't know if it'll show itself in day one of groups. That's a little early to unleash the beast. That is that bomb site. We can speculate. The problem with Jim that we're gonna see unfold is that if your opponents take control of construction and if your opponents take control of logistics, you are trapped. You are just, at that point, you are fish in a barrel and your opponents have all the guns. Right? Well, if you saw people that repel on the CC wall, the reason for that is because the mute jammers with the change that happened about six months ago or so no longer reach the top of the reinforcement. So you can just repel on this region in particular on Jacuzzi and the CC wall and avoid the jammer entirely. With this electric wall being put down below, it will force out not just one, but two EMPs. Maybe not all three, in fact, but the wall will get opened up by Shinka and Beagle. Aggressive. For Mowgli walks in and down goes Laxing. Laxing getting the first pick. And look at this! Shinka's just in, exploiting a hole in the defense. It's Wolves to come out on top of that brawl.
Dreams pulled off some clutches before. He's inside of the bathroom, but he's blinded, shot at, naded. Oh my wow. goodness, everything. And the wow. bathroom sink thrown at his direction. Wolves pick up two in a row. This is kind of like a Wolves classic if you've watched EO before. They do this on a handful of maps. And we actually saw them do it again against Gaming Gladiators just about 20, 30 minutes ago, where they did on Oregon, basement at Blue Rush with EMPs and Blitz into like the elbow position. Same story. All three EMPs go out. Sure, the first ones are for the wall, or the ones are for anything else. Then Shinka just walks on in, gets the opening. And you're thinking, that's not enough. And you're right. Shinka drops the office hatch, rather, or sorry, rise from the office hatch, flanks as well, gets a second kill to side, and all of a sudden, the Wolves, they're all over. They have the mana advantage off the bat, then they trade one for one multiple times, and they end up with the round victory because they're in that leading position. So Wolves are very lethal once they get the opening pick because they play so tight together that if anything bad were to happen, someone's behind there. They get the trade time and time again. And OXG are gonna break that streak. They will actually go back to the same bomb side again, which goes against the norm so far here in day one of groups. And I don't really blame them for it because what happened last round is not gonna me. happen again. That's a one-off strat you can do one time in the match, maybe once now, maybe Five once over time at the, at, the, at the most. So Wolves have to show a different set of cards. Like they're gonna up that roam clear and challenge the CCTV setup because uh, I really, really doubt OXG that they have to There's just... Uh. You just cursed him. No, no, no. There's no way. You're I'll not. You're not allowed to say that. You can't just say, "Oh, there's certainly no way that this no, is going to happen," look. because it means that it absolutely will. They've spawned on the CC side, P Force main door. They're already now changing their strat entirely. Rise one of construction, kills default cam, goes to the roof, opens up the hatch. Efficiency here in the routing of the players. Look, everyone is doing something that is playing towards something later in the round because this hatch right now not important. But a minute from now, it will be. Oh, is little Nick gonna get mad because there's four Quaymores on the board? Four Quaymores is four, a, four too widow, many Quaymores. Four popular. Widow Quaymores on the board is They buffed Pengu Claymores. Quai. Okay, they buffed the Claymores, they have two each. <laughs> and they bring four! Is that. That's what you sound like. Fine. Do I you still compete? Claymores. No, you don't. I don't. Let them figure it out. They're winning Sorry. right now. They lost the first round, but they didn't have breaching charges. So there's that. Whatever. Sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. I don't know, I think Laxing's first pick was pretty integral in that first round. Knocking the sledge out on a yes. church take, huge. you know, maybe that's huge. But yeah, sure, let's just blame the breaching charges and Claymore's man. Thatcher on the board, which is not that much of a rarity on Clubhouse. It allows any of these shock wires or electric claws that are being trotted out in these variety of rounds. This time around, there's shock wires to be used. Down goes vertical, Mowgli will be the main point of entry for Wolves. He will be the main entry, the main person to do it. And he's doing okay, I and mean, he's trading himself out. He's three and three on these entry kills thus far. He's also a utility operator. Second crack at Jim. But it's Wolves to get the leadoff kill for the second time in a row. Not all the Wamai magnets will be present. Rise has been down, and P4 takes a ton of damage, but it's Newers to fall. Another critical operator, but all those Kiba barriers should be up. Is Fox A next to dance with death? Oh, Here's the Adrenal Surge real close. Maybe a bit too close for comfort. How much HP Fox has. Doesn't necessarily want to engage. There he goes, finished off by the Shrapnel. The nade tossed on out. Dream with a kill of his own, but he's going to have to find four more. The Ace Clutch, two to his name. Playing in this position. Locked down inside of Logistics. Can't out-duel Mowgli. Three kills from Mowgli. A good wow. performance. Wolves are certainly feeling it. 3-1 in their favor. Imagine that OXG will be burning their time out relatively soon. I think that's Mowgli. Yeah, I think that's Mowgli joking about throwing the nade. And you know what? <laughs> Guess what just happened? What? They told. Oh, there it is. They called timeout. Oxygen called their timeout. Say it. I. I've always been very curious to see how people like Mowgli and Spot will do against North American players and teams because we always speak about how Europe has like more strats and it has better gunners, but we have actually... No, 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 we don't talk about that. Okay, we don't talk about that? You talk about that. Okay, I talk about that, and so do other Europe people. Europe sucks. Euro Europe actually has sucked EU in recent times. sucks. Yep. NA all day. All day, baby. Sorry, I don't actually believe that, but I had to get it out of my system for the fans <laughs> back home. Yeah, because they, they would be saying that. I, yeah. I think EU is slowly coming back, but they have been... It's been a rough patch for about two years now, right? But with the new rising stars of people like Sport, like Mowgli, like P4 as well, actually this, Wolf Roster, Shinka too, they can actually fight any pros one-to-one -one in gun skill and come out on top even. And Mowgli's uses of his, of his grenades as well, getting 
two nade kills almost in that round, just speaks to both the utility aspect, the brain power, and the individual gunplay in the 1v1 gunfights. And OHC seemingly are stuck in corners in really bad positions, forced to take fights they don't really want to take, rather than being proactively seeking out themselves when they're on the defensive side. And I don't know these orbiter bands just make an OHC think that, oh, defense is easy, just let them figure out the problems, and then we'll take them on the bomb side. Because these days are how good teams are using their drones, yellow pings, grenades from below, etc. And also having significantly stronger guns on the attacking side, finger LMG, the AK-12 and A's, etc. Versus holo scope SMGs and defense, you can't just be like, oh, I'll just shoot your head. It just go. doesn't work that way, right? So I do think OHG, like in the first round when Lexon was roaming, Five they need to, to get more proactive and seek out these fights instead of letting Wolves execute time and time Attackers again. Are moving See if they can do it. 3-1 in favor of Wolves, we're back in the basement. Say rotation so far, Church being defended the first time by OXG. They threw a bunch of things at the wall. <laughs> a word that I'm not allowed to say on broadcast. Even though I'm still waiting to hear back if we actually do have a swear jar. I don't swear on broadcast. It, it fascinates me that our colleagues across the ocean, across the pond, are allowed to say swears. Because don't say swears. But sometimes there's the urge to. Anyway, you throw stuff at the wall. Cash, unsuccessful for OXG. Two attempts at Jim, unsuccessful as well. I am a bit surprised that they're going back to church now. Maybe they thought there was something about that first Jim execute that they can solve, but hey, you're going back to the one bomb site you won, a relatively secure bomb site for most teams on defense, and you did so off of the back of your timeout. That's not a bad set of scenario or bad set of circumstances for OXG. And a pretty good scenario for them to be able to take Another win here. If they lose this round, Wolves definitively win the first round. At yes. least Oxygen to try and salvage it with the second round. But that is obviously not the start that OXG wanted. Newer's has already taken a ton of damage as we now hit the halfway point of the round. Yeah, not just... Yep. Oh my... That is a disgusting angle, by the way, from Ryze. I mean, Vert had no idea that was going to happen because it's a one-way angle. Coming to a ranked game near you, oh, baby! Oh, yeah. You know it's... Sitting on top of the gym hatch with a long angle as he gets droned out, flushing out vertical, and yet again, OXG sacrificing that first pick. Vertical's numbers are underwater at the moment. One in five. Stop. For a player like Vert, that's not what you want, but guess what Wolves didn't do? They didn't drone out Strip Club. And Foxy is in there, in his own lane, flourishing. Gets the pick on Mowgli. Down goes the main entry for Wolves after that impressive 3k that he got in the previous round. You're going to have to ride a minute without him. So, TSM doing invite of this year had this strat where they put Geo and Strip alone. This reminds me of that, but like obviously like Fox is just hiding there. But now it presents that same problem for Wolves. Do you chase him? Do you leave him be? Because Foxy could flank at any given moment. Sure, there might be a flank drone, but Foxy with the right timing can get a ton of damage in here. With 40 seconds left and limited breach available, Wolves, they have a tall task ahead of them. Thankfully, news is low on HP, but this will come down to gunfights and the 1v1s in about 10 seconds. Attackers are for in dirt right now. It's called an escape tunnel, but he wants to do quite the opposite. Inching ever closer, looking over towards dummies, boxes, can't see anything right now. Newers is very close to being spotted, as is Dream, and there it goes. Dream tries to fire back, but P4 with the AK in hand is simply superior. Shinka's turn up next into the bomb site. Down goes the Malusi. Newers the only kill before he gets traded out. Fox says double, but he needs to get back to the bomb site as all of his teammates are as good as dead. Shinka planting, Bibu with the cover. All watching along with Bibu. Bibu versus Foxy. These are two of the oldest players in the game coming oh. head to head. And it's indeed going to be a 1v1 between them as down goes Shinka. Foxy on one HP. A single bullet from Bibu will win this one out. Commando in the hands of Foxy. Doesn't have the same fire rate of the Roni, but can still do quite a lot of damage. Bibu sees him as Foxy Huge. backs up. It's a 4-1 half for Wolves. Still one round remaining. But they take the very first half with four rounds on Clubhouse. And this is with Hibana and Maverick both banned off the board. And sure, Thatcher's open, wada, 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 whatever. But this usually speaks to a def more defensive favored half than usual. And a 4-1 situation, not the greatest. Sure, Orcs D with this final round, they can make it 4-2, and two, which is half decent. But when you're up against Wolves, when you're in this group with W7M and Gaming Gladiators who got seven rounds on Wolves, you need more than decent. Otherwise, you're not going to be out of this group because it's so many good teams put up against one another. 
CCTV, the final defensive half round for the side of OSG, and they need this now more than ever. Aubrey lineup wise, nothing is really changing for OSG. Laxing is flexing between the Bantam and Kai. Dream is playing SG11 as always. Bird, as you mentioned earlier, Parker, having a bit of a rough game so far in the Asami. Keeps getting found early in the round, and those key barriers are not being used to full effect in any of these rounds, which again, it doesn't help the defensive situation that Orochi is in because they need all the intent they can get, given the fact that they're just losing their manpower and losing those gun spots. Second attempt at cash now for OXG on their very final defense. Things have not gone very well for the North American squad. Things haven't gone well for the NA teams at all today, actually. Though there hasn't been a ton of NA in action. We haven't seen Exet play yet. We've seen Astralis play one game. We don't think we've seen the Sonics play either. No, they're so. playing currently. They would be playing currently, yes, against G2, which is going on in the other stream, in case you're curious about the results over there. There's some Grade A beef. I was going to try to make like a German beef joke, but I don't know if I'll be able to do that. Laxing is shaking off this spot. The Mute Jammer and the Bandit Batteries. All of them in the world cannot stop that exothermic charge from going off. Wall in the CCTV, opened up by Wolves with over two minutes to go. That's good pacing, but there's usually a second target for that other exothermic charge, likely to be over towards construction. I haven't seen people use Sophia Thatcher combo to stun the drone hole to basically nullify the bandit because if you use Sophia as a bandit, you stop the animation of the bat bandit batter being put down, thus the bandit trick does not happen. That's exactly what they did. This flank right here did not get hurt by Mo because he gets taken down. Nero's a great aggressive play there. P4 tries to trade it bad, but only a bit of damage goes through. Now, of course, Nero's is stuck in the corner, but Vert is there for the trade. P4 reads it, sees it, and takes it out. Nero should be four seconds after as well, but no, he whiffs. Newer stays alive, Drone sees it, but it's gonna be a 4v4. Very uncharacteristic of Newer's to miss those kinds of shots, especially when he settles in and gets really comfortable. Vertical, again, had been the story that we touched on, and now he will finish the first half one and six. Quite the fall from grace for a Vertical. Bibu will watch as Rise walks up. The Monty is just stalking its prey, and there you go. Distracting the Wamai, huh. dropping its shield. But oh Bibu cannot get a long angle onto the Wamai right now. This is actually quite lucky for Foxay. Oh. And Foxay somehow, confoundingly, outduels Rise and then P4 as well. On top of the catwalk, Foxay cannot be shaken off of this spot. Wolves had so many opportunities, they failed. Looks like they might have almost failed again. Shinka and Foxy will come to blows. That leaves Bibu as the only player on Wolves with full HP. Shinka surveying the damage onto the main breach. The bandit relaxing is within striking distance. It'll be flashed out by Bibu, but Shinka is not there to capitalize. Instead, oh, he'll no. have to run right in. Laxing takes down <laughs> Bibu, and it's a two piece for Laxing. As he laughs about <laughs> it, he laughs about it because he runs right past him. Glad you got to see that. Fortunate. Unfortunate indeed. OXG pick up their second round. Comes in the very final round of their defense. Side swap comes in. Wolves will move on to defense. Tail of the tapes. In terms of opening picks, Wolves leading the way. They got one diffuser down as well. Three bomb sites were seen. No bar stage. Church and Cash were won once by the defense each. That's it. Jim and Bedroom played twice. Cool. Not a defender favorite. Spying a bar. All there the way is. to stage, yeah. and so is this bomb site. Bar stage. I like this. I said that this is oftentimes a pocket pick for a lot of these teams. Well, Wolves said to hell with that. <laughs> Very first round of our defense. We're going to try to knock you off stride. Now, there are two ways to look at this. Kind of bomb. Way number one. This is cunning and brilliant, and I can't believe they would do that. What a wrench it throws in the gears of OXG. Okay. The other way to look at it. This is Ten so dumb. Go. Why would they go to a weaker site when they could easily start off strong on one of the better defender-sided sites? Okay. Which category do you fall into? Attackers are heading out. I think, I think I'm on, on the first side, right? Because CC and, and C C T V and Bar is like, or CCTV and Jim rather, everyone knows how to attack against it and defend it. Bar is like, everyone has played against it less, so if you're well prepared with like what you want to do in defense, I feel like you already, always have like a slight edge towards it. I think it's smart. And I'll also make the argument that because Wolves are in the lead for two, they can risk taking this kind of like lower win rate bomb site because, well, even if they lose, they're still four and three. So I honestly feel like you might as well in the scenario. 
where the score is reversed, where Wolf is 2 against 4 no HG. A bit risky, but some people like that. So far, so good. Well spread out. Usually you'll see teams defending weight room an awful lot. Jim upstairs, you might see an extension into Strip. Wolves focus though is mainly on over towards that gym side of the map on the top floor. Holding on to it, Castle Barricade's there to assist them. I am curious to see how the OSA plays out. Fox A running the operator that we don't see a ton of outside of a few maps. Usually because she doesn't bring the same level of utility, not a lot of explosive potential that you see from an OSA with the two shields and smokes being the most common lineup. One of those talent shields has already been placed somewhere. I'm curious to see as to where it went. There's a second lined up. You can put one by the main door, looking into stock, looking into lounge, looking into stage. Yeah. And you can hold that power position because the only real way to counter that is a jump out from big window by billboard or by billiards, which is where Dream is with the diffuser, by the way. And he just runs right in. Vertical goes, Dream is safe, as safe as can be, and he's gonna plant. Rise with the drop, no, nobody knows. Nobody knows. No idea. They don't know. Exactly they lack right. critical the information as Dream gets the diffuser down and then gets slaughtered. Wolves cleaning up on the kill feed. Suddenly, both Laxing and Foxy have to reposition there. That's where the talent it. shield is inside a stop. Foxy takes out the castle, but will have to move to the diffuser and softening up as best as he can. Mowgli has been dropped, which means nobody's on the objective anymore. Down goes Laxing. Oh, Foxy in a 1v4, but the long arm is coming Ooh. in with Shinka cleaning up. Wolves gamble on bar and stage, and the gamble pays off. They take their very first round on defense. They stretch their lead. They're only two rounds away from putting OXG in the dustbin. I really, so, I really respect what OXG tried to do there. They saw that nobody was on side, vertical was weak, no information, right? Valkyrie spent, etc. They go deep on the bomb side, they get the plant down. Wolves have no idea. But the issue is, the post plant position is extremely weak. The only real strong position is Stock Room, where Foxy was behind the Talon Shield. And the moment he left that position and died eventually, no one can really do much about the entire you know, bomb, uh, diffuser situation. No one's up above, don't have vertical control. There's a castle barricade blocking your path. You can't really get inside the bomb site again. So once you're out, you're really locked out. And that's ultimately what cost OHD that round. It pays off for Wolves. They win bar. They're going to go basement. We might pass it. Have a rehost, it seems like, because of Dream asking for it. We'll see if it gets confirmed or not. And then, we'll, if it does happen, we'll get a react back, of course, after a quick rehost. It seems like, yep, we'll be leaving the server and we will be coming back in a few minutes. They will be exiting the server, Five and I remaining. imagine we will show a beautiful photo of both of these teams. It says that Wolves run the round, but that is not the case. Not true. <laughs> not true. Not true at all. We'll just see. Thankfully, nothing was really shown, nothing quite happened, so we can go straight back to the basement bomb site. No one knows what the setup looks like, so it's gonna be even grounds once we get back. So just bear with us for one second. I'm glad that you finally learned that basements exist that are below yes. the ground. Yes. I think that's very cool. So <laughs> it's only taken you about a year or so. So I played in the North American Challenge League qualifiers How'd last weekend. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we got second place, or third place. Right? So are you in Challenger League now? No, only top two. So we didn't make it. You said you got second place. I, I did not create it to third. I, I was wrong. We got third place. I'm very confused. Okay, we got third place. Okay. Top two made it, so I think. So let me ask you this. Okay. As an NAL oh, no. caster, okay. how would it work if you were both an NAL caster and also a <laughs> North American <laughs> Challenger League player? Well, you don't play on the same day as we cast, I don't think. So you just... You we play? don't. No, exactly. But you do you also think that playing in the North American Challenger League would tarnish... Your legacy. Do you think it's beneath you? Yeah. As oh, yeah. a two-time, back-to-back, mm. reigning, defending world champion. You know yeah. when they said move to North America, you have to bring the goods here and save NA? <laughs> yeah, they didn't mean finishing third in NACL qualifiers. Okay, I'm sorry. I play with a mixed team with no strats. I'm, okay, my point was, by the way, my point was, uh -huh. we, we played Cafe, and I said, let's do a basement direct attack. And they go, where's the basement? And, um, oh, hold on a second. Oh, very cool. Thank you. Nice. Mm -hmm. Sweet. <laughs> They've opened the blinds. I don't know. And now if we need to do them ourselves. I believe that was the voice of God. It sounded like the voice God? of God. Was that you? The blinds can be opened. Happy days. I don't know if you know this, but the blinds, they're open, baby. 
Um, I lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. Reasonably we so. Were, <laughs> I don't <laughs> know how <laughs> I have no clue. Fluke is standing uh. by. <laughs> just She's losing her mind right now. <laughs> I The look that she gave when that uh, voice came over the speaker. Stunned. Incredible stuff. Like, God, is that you? We're back in the game, by the way. Yeah, we are. Um, yeah, I played Cafe, and I said we should do go for a basement attack, and they're like, there's no basement on Cafe. I feel like your point is no longer a lot. Oh, <laughs> I, I, I haven't really learned. That was my point. But I'm learning still. This is a basement over. But this is Clubhouse. It's going to be with Wolves in defense. Ocean attack. Really quick rears, but good job, guys. The bang is over really rapidly. Very swiftly here. Appreciate Very quick. It. Very quick. Again, Kai being brought out is more like to force out the Thatcher to limit the attacking lineup. Um, because Thatcher nullifies the Kai, but if you don't bring the Thatcher, you gotta bring an extra set of nades, yada yada yada. TLDR, Thatcher makes life a lot easier, but it's only really being brought out because you're forcing it by beating up the Kai, so you're nullifying each other. Both teams doing it. Looks like up that style of choice. And Wolves, once again, just like on Oregon, Attackers only with the one gun the bomb side. Bomb That's and poor man Shinka. And then you got four rovers looking to shut down entry points off OXG. Kill some drones. Maybe get a kill if you're lucky, but just make life difficult for them. Give them a bunch of troubles that they have to solve and slow them down. That's gonna be this. CC wall gets opened up by a single Selma charge. Good value there. But they need more because the infantry goes out denying that breach. It is no longer an entry point, but just a line of sight. Newers opting for the garage, walking with Foxy, droning down below. Looks like a relatively swift approach. Again, that's not Foxy. That's not Newers! Oh my goodness, these. It's they're nice wearing it. each other's clothes. Must they're wearing each other's skin. I would gladly. Let Maxing take my skin. I was going to say, what? <laughs> All right, Parker. We have fully lost it at this point, by the way. That we have. Uh, yeah. But you know who hasn't lost just yet? Oh, she. They're still fighting, baby. Round and round again and again. Wolves have fallen all the way back to the basement, all five members. Now we see one, two, three, four, and five. That means that OXG, they might not know this, right? They still got a drone out, they remain off the map. They got a drone sh the strip area because Foxy himself was hiding there earlier, and they have only just entered the top floor. They're gonna spend the next 20 or so seconds droning out the first one now. Bar, kitchen, strip, then start doing verticality, then start working on those hatches. Now, they have two Selma charges left in the in pocket of Dream. And then they're playing Buck with that secondary can open a hybrid schedule you see right now. Really good value. But what this does mean is that because they're not on the table, they can't really open up the church walls if they wanted to. They're gonna be limited to the hatches. This is likely gonna be a kitchen attack or a blue attack. Given that this is the case for them right now, they have to wait. Buck going to town upstairs with a sledge not too far off. No nitro cell awaits them. Bibu's already used his, or maybe it's presets. B4 with one in hand. Well, if it's preset, you better hope that he pulled the trigger at some point. And, uh, a little bit of damage, who knows? Newers with the very first kill, it's on the Bibu. That was the nitro cell that we talked about. Still one in the pocket of P4. Will that be prioritized for plant denial, or will it be used to try and disrupt whatever push is happening above them? Right now, your guess is as good as mine. Some of that kitchen hatch has been opened up. Exactly enough to see through. That's a single Selma charge, so you can't drop that way for oxygen, but you can still get a pretty good line of sight. Newer's creeping up in blue while the rest of the attention is focused over towards Church, and he capitalizes, taking down Mowgli, a second kill to his name. The first one came with an aid. Now with the gun in his hands, a third could be found, and it will. Oh, Vertical it. finally getting on the board, as he'd struggled for the last couple rounds, and a beautiful and delightful crossfire established, as OXG's third round is flawlessly done. Not bad. News at three kills that round as well. LMG in hand doing good work, and we haven't really seen a lot of finger bends yet. I'm curious if that's going to like be kind of like progressing as this tournament goes on because in the domestic leagues of both the NAL and the EUL and even in APEC actually, Finka's ban rate has risen rather quickly towards the like stage two, yet no one is really doing it as of yet here at the Berlin Major. 5-3 is the scoreline. Jim is next for Wolves. 
And given that we know they can play all four bomb sites, they have so many different things to choose between if nothing's really working for them. Because we saw them win bar on their first opening defensive round, they can always go back there if they want to at some point, and let's see if Oshi can break it. But, as I mentioned, it is going to be June 1st. We are going to extend to CCTV. Rise, looking for those injured drones. Already found one. Four left of four for OHG, limiting their preface information and what rotations are being held once the round starts. Ten seconds left. Really crazy to think that this all started off with a bar stage defense. Yeah. It was rather nice. It was rather nice, wasn't it? Attackers are moving to the Wolves very close to securing all three points. I'd like to remind you that while Wolves typically sit atop the group, that they only got two points. True. Gaming Gladiators secured one through overtime. If OXG loses in regulation, they leave a point on the table. If they can possibly push overtime, that would be ideal for their fortunes. Very similar to the matchup that just happened that Nick and I casted, and you might have watched between Gaming Gladiators and Wolves, it's a 4-2 half to start things off. But this time it was the attackers doing well, not the defenders. For Oxygen, who've now picked up one round on attack, time to, make it to hope that they'll get a couple more. They don't have a timeout to spare, though they already used it. Yeah. So there's no real way to slow things down. And a lot of people would argue that the momentum will go in favor of the defenders because they're going to be the ones who have the setups in mind. They're going to be the ones that have the site rotation in mind. Attackers have to be more reflexive, more reactionary to it. Should be a bit harder to do. Gotta see, then you gotta do exactly. Nurse to the bathroom might you know, find the gun of milk with your vice versa because these two young gunners will face off on the main stairs. And I think they both have an idea of the whereabouts of one another. SMG 11 versus LMG never goes in favor of SMG 11 ever as Nurse finds that kill easy peasy onto Mowgli. Just imagine that. You, a lowly defender with what, 16, 17 bullets? 17 bullets. Against a gun that has 100. Yeah. Very fair. Very fair. As the wise Samuel Stokes Stewart once said, you only need five bullets. <laughs> no. Not that cool, man. One per head. That's it. And Samuel has... Well, everyone's got five, it's a good thing. Bird is in, shoots a trap. There is none, though. P4 gets the kill instead. Beeble in a great position out of gym right here. It's laxing to follow up. Still giving the advantage in favor of Oxygen. It will continue to go in their way. And the ball is very firmly rolling down the hill at this point. It seems to be nigh unstoppable. Shinka in a tough spot. Newer is not too far away. Rise is nowhere near close to being able to support the Frost. of Shinka will have to duel once again with that LNG of Newer's dreams. Just seconds away from getting the diffusers down. And Rise will be pinched. Two separate angles. You look to the left, you look to the right. Pick your poison. Either way, it's gonna kill you. OXG starting to put together their body of work now on attack. Is there one round away from tying up Wolves? It's getting close indeed, and that might, yep, that is gonna force a tactical timeout from the side of Wolves. They're gonna slam the brakes. This is the one only time they can do this, and as you mentioned earlier, OXG has already done that themselves, so this will be the final timeout of this matchup. Got 30 seconds left to discuss what we think is going to be the move going forward. Of course, if you're Wolves, you want to talk about bombsite priority, maybe a pocket strat, or what you think is going wrong. Against Gaming Gladiators, when the when Wolves called that tactical timeout, they actually won two of the following three rounds, so they actually got some momentum under their wings, and it clearly worked out for them. That was what they needed. Now, can they do the same thing once more here? And mind you, if one team, for example, Wolves, takes a, takes a timeout, OXG can also talk amongst each other and their coach as well. Both sides get that both times. So far, if you look at the way that the timeouts have worked, just from the two matches that you and I have casted up to this mm. point, Game and Gladiators took their timeout. They won three rounds in a row. True. Wolves took a timeout, won two rounds in a row, and then won the whole game off of it. OXG called a tactical timeout and dropped the next round, but then went on to win three of the next four after that, including doing really well after the side swap. This time, Wolves have taken their timeout. They got three rounds to collect two rounds to at least secure a win, one round to secure overtime. Also, by the way, the match that was occurring above us was not G2 Sonics. It was Sandbox versus Phasey Clan. Oh, I thought it was interesting. No, I I'm assuming. I don't know if they play later today or not. I saw, uh, I saw Adam on tweet about it. 
So, so, oh, did you? Yeah. So I blame Carl. Objective is to locate a bomb and defuse it. Carl. Carl. I do blame him. See once again, viewers, on the fast injury. They drove the to great effect so far. Wolves not being as aggressive as they were in Oregon earlier. Not really challenging the initial entry points for Oregon. She, no one's playing Garage. No one's shutting down those drones. Vert making his way to that office hatch light. They're gonna pop it over with that sledgehammer in a moment. It's a moment's notice. Viewers are gonna call Garrett's camera. You often see the entry players from teams into the same places because it's all about building a pattern. How you swing the angles, kill the default cam, clear out certain positions, etc. Same with the drone in. Often when you see teams do this, the drone goes in the same position at the same timing so that there's like a synergy and a connection link between the droner and the entry. See right now, Dream drones the drone hunt to red, drones the area for newers. Then newers also if he clears the jammer, Dream drones forward. Newers holds the angle while you drone the other. This means newers can basically make that crossfire less um, I guess lethal towards him and enables him to gain some ground space. Look at Mowgli falling back so quickly because of this pressure being applied, and newers has a sixth sense that people might be in this corner. Is coming up Ooh. on it. Mowgli getting shut down, but Bibu is still there. Have they oh, droned him? They just did, and Bibu decides to take the engagement. A shotgun for good measure will silence Newer's vertical falls as well. Wolves picking up two very quick kills. The entry from OXG was good, though, by the way. Mowgli was yeah. the first one to die. And that might knock you off stride for the Malusi, but still a graceful recovery from Wolves as they have that advantage. And he chastised them for the claymores when they were on attack. Now it's now it's oxygen on attack bringing these claymores. And showing that they're going to do the job of flank watch on a map like Clubhouse. That might not necessarily be a bad idea. Bibu seems to have gotten spotted, as does Rise, but there's backup. P4 Ooh, takes out risky. Fox A. Can P4 get Rise up in time? Will somebody from OXG be able to get there? Laxing is so close. So is Dream. Dream capitalizing off of Rise. There wasn't a ton left. That free fire towards the soft wall. He's trapped on stage. P4 in the bathroom. Laxing a long line of sight. Is it bashful? We all get a little awkward in the bathroom from time to time. The patient, he? too. He seems like he's quite bashful. Attack is a drop bomb watching. diffuser. I don't blame oh, him. the timing. I don't blame him, frankly. When I, I, you know, you can get kind of uncomfortable when people are watching, watching you in the bathroom. You know? Performance art. I was say, you to perform. Some would say you don't. You can't perform. You gotta, you gotta go. You gotta go. I guess not. If somebody's around. It's laxing in a one v two. By the way, a very hopeless situation for laxing to be in right now. He has no intel. He'll have to play instinctively off of these wolves players who aren't giving him an inch. He gets stuck. Still takes down one, but added insurance says there's just simply two players to the one of you. That's match point in favor of wolves. That it is. Again, Rome was successful, but it was mostly on a misplay from OXG's side, but right? not joining out the corner where people was in an office. That got you one kill, you fall back together, get a second kill, and then OXG finds themselves on that back foot. It was close, and it took me one. I will say this, not that I'm a body language-ologist. Okay. I'm not an expert on these kinds of things, okay. but there is not a single positive look on any of the faces of Wolves, and when we came back to that camera, Mowgli was very incensed. He seemed to be quite pissed off. Now, I will say, Mowgli has not had the best results over the last couple rounds prior to the rehost, and then certainly not since the rehost as well as he sits at 0 3. That could just be personal frustration spilling over. But if it's not personal frustration, maybe Mowgli is annoyed at the way that the team is not playing around him, or the way that he feels the team should be using him on entry, because we do need to remind people when Mowgli attacks, he's on entry. When he plays on defense, he's often roaming, and he's often doing so in a way that is set up to support the team. If he He's not being supported. Many rounds he'll die for nothing. Does he get traded out? out provides a limited bomb. value for the team if you don't waste a lot of time or take down any drones with you. And that's where that personal frustration can bleed over to more of that interpersonal team related frustration. But of course, we don't know the ins and outs. We can't hear their comments. We can just speculate. That's a good point, though. Working on that vertical is very low HP here. Take a look. Take a look. Where are we? we are in the bar. We are where it started and where it might just end. It's in a book. Oh, well, it's the Reading Rainbow. And we are indeed. Bar and stage mythos. Yeah, I call this stock. Amateur mistake right there. I mean, bar and stock is so commonplace. I still yeah. call cafe kitchen bakery, Who's even though it's uh, double kitchen. Yeah. It's just something that sticks. It does stick. It does indeed. So. 
Bar and stage, Newer's doing significantly better since coming back from this rehost. Vertical, I suppose, two, though he's one and six, like one and seven, two and seven, something along those lines. Yeah. Still not the ideal result for him, but finding his stride as he's the only one who's taken damage on the side of OXG. Nobody taking any damage from Wolves. This bar and stock defense will again rely on OXG taking control of Jim and Bedroom upstairs. Oh. The remainder of Vertical is found and met at the hands of the MP7, MP4's bond. So down they will go. OXG losing that very first pick. And in terms of first blood, Wolves have been pretty okay with it, frankly. They've been doing an all right job. Newers takes down Mowgli. Again, is this frustration that will spill over from Mowgli's performance? Will this be a team related issue? Not entirely certain, but either way, teams sit at even strength 4v4. Bit of a peculiar summon charge from Dream. Very far Bob off on the wall. Can't quite get in there. So curious what that's about. So that's being dated from Vert. Might actually cost him because they can't quite open up these soft walls. What OG is doing is they're taking half of top floor. CCTV, Garage, and Newers are holding down the hatch flank from above. The other three members are going to walk down below and try and get the plant down. The issue, no smokes on Foxy on Thermite and no Osa this time. So these flashbangs that Foxy has chosen to ride with might cost them, or at the very least, make it more difficult than necessary for them to get down that diffuser. That's your entire plan for the strategy. Inter falls on the diffuser carrier, that be seen alone. The yes, SS LMG, so many bullets, but not enough because Beeble gets to trade instead. Beeble up above as well. With no diffuser case in hand of Foxy, he's all alone in the kitchen hallway. Foxe is the last man standing. Almost certain that Wolves will pick up all three points here, barring a miracle. Well, we've seen miracles from OXG before, especially Foxe. Will he be able to accomplish it? Well, he's got a lot of work to be done, and he gives his position away. All the gunfire as he looks to the left, but there's an opening to the right. Just simply too many angles to cover. They dropped a point against Game and Gladiators, but they end their day with all three against OXG. Hmm. Wolves by a score of seven to four send the North American team into the loser's column. Does that mean that APAC is greater than North America, at least for now? I think so. I think so. Great game showing from both teams, of course. OG falling a bit short. Bit of a slow start from Vertical specifically, but there is definitely more that OG can do at this event than what we saw against them, uh, against Wolves and Clubhouse just now. They got more in them. Absolutely. Well, I mean, if you're Oxygen, you're going to be frustrated with that result, full stop. There's yeah. no way around it. It took you a little bit too long to find your footing. But again, just as we saw in the Gaming Gladiators matchup, the Wolves are not confidently putting away their opponents. Four teams like OXG, Gaming Gladiators, and W7M, that's a good thing because if the Wolves have an off day, there are points there for you to start to pick up. And as much as in the previous matchup, we kind of gave a little bit of slack to Wolves, we need to be very particular about the fact that Wolves are not playing up to their potential right now. They really aren't. They don't look as aggressive and as formidable as they do against EU teams. It's the first day. They might need some time to settle in. Who knows? Yeah. But it's very clear that this group is going to be quite competitive based on these two matches. And we still have two more to go later today, Nick. That we do. And it's kind of like slowly shaping up, but I do agree that teams are not going to be comfortable on day one. They're filling out each other's opponents, the play styles, the differences, and of course, when you go into a major event like the Berlin Major and you got four teams in every single group, sure, you got to study just your other three opponents. But you also, you're assuming that you're going to qualify to the playoffs, which means you got to mm -hmm. study essentially 15 other teams potentially. That's a lot of prep work. It's a ton of prep work to be done. And for some of these teams that don't have the same level of experience or don't have the same mm. size of coaching staff, that can be an awful lot of work to be done. If you look at a team like Wolves and you look at a team like OXG, they both have very large coaching staffs. And they've got some bright minds behind the bench that can help prepare them for their opponents. Today, the Wolves looked prepared. Maybe not as prepared as they could be but prepared enough to get five of six points for the day. That's it for our fourth matchup. We've got half of the day still to go. I know it seems like it's a little bit late, and believe you me, it's late here, but we're just getting started. The other half of our stream begins now, but we have a break first. We'll be back in a couple minutes.